Hey Sarnabh, welcome to 60 Time and today we're going to be talking about um, World War II aircraft pilots, cockpits, averages and the size of the women's body. It's quite a mix of topics. Let's get into it. Okay. So what we are really talking about today is uh, when taking averages is not the best option. Especially uh, if you take uh, the averages of multiple values and you put them together, uh, what you get uh, is probably not a composite average. Okay. Now, all of these words might mean very uh, complex. So let's uh, talk of a story. And uh, this uh, this today's video is actually based up on an article that came out in uh, the in the Star, and I will put a link to that in the description uh, where you can read about it in detail. So, um, uh, in the 1940s, when the World War II was uh, going on, uh, the U.S. Air Force figured out that there was a lot of pilot errors that were happening on their aeroplanes, uh, as a result of which uh, the, some of the planes were crashing, some of the planes were diving. So, there were a lot of incidents and a lot of accidents that were happening uh, to these flights. Um, although, like initially, uh, people were not able to pin down what was the cause, uh, but uh, it was soon evident that the problem was not with the machines; the planes were fine. Uh, the problem was with how the how the pilots were actually interacting with the planes, and uh, it uh, was evident that uh, there was some ergonomic problem in the design of the cockpit. Like, uh, how far do you have to reach for the you know joystick, or uh, you know how far you have to reach for a certain switch? So um, these were all, uh, you know, different uh, problems there. So after a lot of research, it was decided that um, they will uh, redesign the cockpit, uh, keeping in mind uh, that you know most pilots would find uh, you know most of the controls easy to reach, um, and you know make it very ergonomic in nature. So uh, what they initially thought was they would take the uh, standard body measurements of all the U.S. Uh, Air Force pilots, so like height of the neck, width of the head, uh, length of the arm, you know, waist height, everything like you know, different different body measurements they will take, and they will take an average of all of these. Okay, so they will take everybody's waist measurement, and the average of that they will consider as the waist. They will take the uh, average of everybody's neck as uh, the height of the neck of an average pilot so basically what they will do is they will take uh, 20 or 30 different measurements like a tailor does when you know they are preparing uh, a tailored suit for you and uh, they will take the average of each of these values put them together and create uh, what they thought would be the ideal or the average uh, united states air force pilot and they will design the cockpit according to the needs of that particular pilot and then when uh, people would be uh, you know uh, flying that airplane uh, it would not be a problem for them because uh, you know all the controls and all would be, have been designed uh, according to a body size of an average pilot and most people would be close to the average right that's where they were wrong and um, why they were wrong uh, to prove that we actually have to go to a story a little further back so this was about in the beginning of the war um, it was also uh, in America, uh, in, in a place called uh, Cleveland. So there was this uh, competition that was held. So uh, the competition said that uh, the I think, top 10 women whose uh, body dimensions, um, everything, you know, size of uh, the, the height, the weight, head, everything, again, the very similar thing. So the dimension of the body uh, of those women, uh, which matches... Uh, most closely with a sculpture called Norma uh, would win certain prizes. Okay, so uh, this sculpture of this woman, uh, woman called Norma that uh, exists in Cleveland, uh, was built using a very similar uh, kind of a theory. So the measurements of I think 4,000, 5,000 women had been taken, and uh, their uh, the exact averages were found out. And using those averages, the sculpture norma was made. So everything, the height, weight, and uh, you know, uh, length of every body part of the norma sculpture was basically the average of all the women um, in that area. And uh, people felt that you know this is the ideal uh, sculpture of a woman because everything is average. Something interesting that happened was 
nobody was able to claim those prizes because there was no single woman whose uh, body uh, dimensions matched that of norma and this was surprising because uh, if uh, you take uh, a lot of the you know measurements and you find their average and then you try to find uh, the person whose measurements match the average you would obviously find people whose measurements would match the average because you know there would be a lot of people whose measurements would be very near to the value of average um so why did it not uh, able to find that uh, was because of uh, something really interesting is like if you plot the graph of distribution of say the height of all the women and if you plot the uh, distribution of uh, the you know say the diameter of the neck or the width of the shoulder okay uh, and say uh, the width of the you know waist so we're taking height waist uh, neck and shoulders and if you plot a graph so we will see that uh, you know um, the the women who have uh, the height which is very close to the average don't have a neck width which is close to the average neck width right so these distributions of uh, you know uh, different different physical properties of every uh, woman uh they don't average out uh on the same particular woman so somebody who has uh, a very average height might have a very peculiar uh, neck width and somebody who has a very average neck width might have uh, like you know very short or very tall height so it's not necessary that the same person has uh, the exact uh, average height as well among everybody else has the exact average neck width as well among everybody else uh the exact average you know shoulder distance as well as everybody else in fact uh, there is no such person like if you, there, there were 4000 5000 uh, people taken in and there were 20 measurements done and among them uh, among all of these people not a single person had the exact same body dimensions as the average that you would find out uh, if you find the average for every dimension for every one of these people now uh, this was a lesson uh, that uh, helped uh, you know uh, the united states air force on uh, not going down the same road and creating that particular cockpit which was designed for the average uh, pilot because if they designed it as per uh, the average pilot then uh, you know there would be a lot of pilots whose height would be average but uh, you know their length of their arms or you know their uh, you know build or their you know uh, width of their arms or width of their neck or you know shoulder distance those things would be very different um, so not a single person would actually find that new cockpit comfortable because although this cockpit was designed using all the average dimensions no one particular person actually fits into all the averages together it's really interesting because uh, if you try to uh, if you try to think of it intuitively you would think that okay um, you know i will take a lot of different measurements i will average them out which means it will be a value uh, to which everybody would be close to uh, but uh, it is only when you actually look at the data and uh, you try to match a particular person to that you realize that uh, not all uh, you know distribution uh, curves match in the you know uh, same place a very uh, interesting thing about data is also that uh, how we choose to interpret it now um, when we talked about this uh, pilots and the uh, cockpit thing it turned out to be great that uh, you know they did not design the cockpit based on the average uh, rather than that they you know uh, went for uh, you know uh, actually matching the values of all the pilots and finding out how many of them were really matching the average before trying to build the cockpit uh but uh, remember we talked about the beauty pageant uh, just before where uh, they were trying to find out whose average body dimensions matches that of norma so uh, when that beauty pageant actually happened and no particular woman matched the ideal dimensions of norma um, you know what conclusion the people drew from that they thought that women in america are not taking care of their bodies uh, they are you know eating too much getting obese or they are not eating too much and being skinny so none of them fit the uh, average woman because uh, nobody is taking care of their bodies they did not think of it as the other way around that uh, the concept of creating that norma sculpture was wrong itself because not all the dimensions come out to be average for the same particular person 
so that's really interesting when we are uh, dealing with data is uh, to always question the initial assumptions with which we have collected that data rather than uh, formulating a certain um, you know uh, viewpoint based on the results that we have gathered uh, which have been established up on top of those assumptions so um, hope this has been something interesting that you learned today and uh, hopefully if you have to create a composite average like take averages of multiple values and put them together uh, maybe you can take care of the fact uh, of this cockpit and uh, norma and realize that that's not uh, exactly the way averages work especially not for human body dimensions it might work for something else but not for this um, we keep on posting uh, about uh, more such interesting facts about uh, numbers and science uh, and technology on uh, the 60 time channel uh, if if you like that please uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, continue to watch more such videos and if this particular video was interesting please uh, share it with your friends too and enlighten them as well thank you so much